In terms of uh, uh, how I might see my book contributing to the present scene of um, more academic studies in uh, New Testament theology, um, or how it relates to um, people in the churches, let me first address the, the more academic realm. Um, there have been a number of New Testament theologies that have been written, but they haven't as systematically, consistently, and rigorously attempted to see how every major notion of the New Testament is rooted in the Old Testament. Um, now again, I, I can't, uh, no one can cover every, every notion, but I, I'm, I'm trying to hit the major notions and showing how it's rooted in the Old and also uh, how uh, every major notion is a facet of an already and not yet in time doctrine. Now, uh, as far as I can tell, I haven't found New Testament theologies that have done that, uh, at least as consistently as I'm trying to do it. Again, it wasn't their aim, and so I'm not uh, criticizing them for that. Um, but there's been a lot of talk in academic circles about biblical theology, what is biblical theology. Uh, it's sometimes a term, a, a phrase that um, uh, some people have a hard time defining. And, and the way I'm defining it for the New Testament is that twofold idea of really looking at what Old Testament biblical theology is in its storyline and then seeing how that feeds in to the storyline of the New Testament. When I say storyline, I don't mean something physical, of course, uh, uh, um, fictional, of course. I mean something that uh, is a, uh, a redemptive, historical, true story. Um, so, um, uh, biblical, a New Testament, biblical theology includes in it Old Testament, biblical, not just new. Uh, and so I try rigorously to uh, see what the Old Testament uh, uh, has to say and then how that's developed in the New and all these various major ideas of the New Testament, whether sanctification or justification or reconciliation or Christology or uh, pneumatology um, or even hamartiology. With hamartiology, uh, uh, what I've done is I haven't written a typical chapter on the doctrine of sin. What I've done is written a chapter on idolatry because I contend in the book that idolatry is the root of all sin. When you turn away from God and commit yourself to something else, all manner of sin occurs. So um, that is pretty much how I see uh, my work attempting to intersect with the more uh, academic concerns about biblical theology in, uh, in, in the evangelical uh, uh, academic realm. Um, with regard to people in the church and interested Christian readers, um, again, uh, some may uh, have been exposed more or less to the ideas of how the old relates to major New Testament ideas and, and, and how New Testament, uh, the major ideas in the new are part of uh, uh, end time already and not yet uh, uh, latter-day ideas. And I think this book will flesh that out for them. Some may not have been exposed to it all, and I think that uh, this would be a good way to um, uh, see uh, uh, how these ideas can enrich uh, um, one's understanding of the New Testament and how it hangs together and how it hangs together with the Old Testament. Now, the last chapter, in fact, what I do is I take uh, 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 even more doctrines than, than I centrally focus on in the book, but I include those too, and I show how each major notion, take, for example, justification, how is that a reality with Old Testament saints? How is that an inaugurated in-time reality? And then how is that a consummated uh, reality? How do those three things relate to one another? Uh, that, that's something I, I'd never seen anyone do, and I, wa I wanted to include that at the end of the book as a kind of way of wrapping um, everything up. I do think, however, for people in the church and the interested Christian reader, I think it's very important to see the, 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 the traditional doctrines that, that we're familiar with as Christians, um, the, the idea of justification by faith. How many of us really see that as an end-time idea? And some will say, well, so what difference does that make? Well, uh, the difference is, is that it, it, it's, ex it, it, it's extremely enriching to see that when Christ took the penalty of our sin, the end time judgment was actually penetrating back and coming upon Him. And then 
our identification with his resurrection, uh, uh, just as 1 Timothy 3 says, his resurrection uh, uh, vindicated his righteousness. So our standing in his resurrection uh, 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 vindicates us as righteous in him, as the exalted last Adam. Um, Take the example of Christology. When I'm speaking of Christology, I'm talking about Christ. Just take the titles of Christ. Son of Man comes right out uh, directly uh, from Daniel 7, where the Son of Man is an end-time ruler, who will rule over all the kingdoms. Jesus comes in the New Testament as the Son of Man. He's beginning an end-time reign. Even though he doesn't look like a king, he is a king. Uh, uh, and eventually all eyes at the end will see that he is the true son of man from Daniel 7, or son of God. Uh, uh, Psalm 2 speaks of the Messiah as God's son. Again, a time when God's son would come and rule over all the kingdoms in an end time kingdom. So you can't even think of the titles of Christ without thinking about the end times. And again, uh, uh, once you see uh, that lens, looking at those names and titles through the notion of the end times, and, and you go back to those Old Testament texts uh, that talk about this, it's, it's extremely enriching uh, for understanding those notions. Our resurrection, our, our regeneration, that we've been raised with Christ, raised spiritually and identified with Him. How many understand that is really that we're the beginning of an end time new creation, or a real end time new creation? It's not that we're just like resurrected beings, we are resurrected beings. We've begun to experience the fulfillment of the prophecy of the great resurrection from the Old Testament, as well as the prophecies of the new creation. And we're an actual literal new creation, not just that we're like a new creation. And once you realize our identity, uh, uh, in partaking and participating in those amazing redemptive historical realities that begun fulfillment, that has to change our lives. And uh, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation, old things have passed away and new things have come. The old uh, 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 sinful manner of our life has to begin to pass away. And the new creation has to begin to bud and to begin to bear fruit which it will not consummately, that will not consummately happen until the very end when we're raised from the dead. And so I think uh, seeing that we're uh, participating in these amazing fulfillments of prophecy, um, uh, the restoration of exile, Israel's restoration from exile, Jesus was the ultimate one uh, who experienced the epitome of Israel's exile in death and separation from the Father, and the resurrection was his resurre restoration from exile, and so it is our restoration from exile. It's the true end time Israel. And uh, when that was to happen in the Old Testament, there was to be a new creation. We were to be different people. We don't return to the sins uh, uh, of when we were in exile, when we've begun to come out of it. Though, however, we can look at sanctification as being continually on the road uh, of uh, the restoration road. We continually are, are uh, coming out of exile. We're on that road. We don't finally achieve consummate uh, uh, restoration from exile until our bodies are removed by resurrection from this world. And so as we're on this restoration road, we need to continue to put off the baggage that we had in the old exile, the sinful baggage. It's a concept. It's a way to look at sanctification. Um, so these are just a few examples of, of how I think that this can uh, perhaps um, shock people into the reality that all of these things we're identified with are literal. They're not ju just because they're spiritual doesn't mean they're not literal.